What's up? Welcome to another player interview over here at the Transfer Portal CFP presented by No Context CFP. Got a sick Alan. We've got the GOAT Rashad Wisdom Safety on UTSA with us today. What's up, Rashad? How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you know, I mean, I appreciate y'all having me on for sure. Yeah, happy to have well, you. We have to introduce, we have to say ranked UTSA. We can't just say UTSA anymore. It's ranked <laughs> UTSA now. True. Gotta show some respect with that. Yeah, appreciate that. Appreciate ranked. that as well. Eight people finally took notice, ranked UTSA over here at the transfer portal CFP. We've had UTSA ranked for like a month. I know in my poll, I've had them ranked for like a month plus. So we've been respecting the Roadrunners. Um, I think everybody but one person on our panel picked UTSA to win the CUSA going into the season. So they're making us proud. Uh, and, and Brian, I know you're out there in the San Antonio area. Uh, thank you for coming on to this interview as well. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm uh, loving loving what, what the runners are doing. I've been, uh, I was a student there for a while. I've been keeping up with what they're doing. I went to their very first game back in 2011 against, man, I don't remember who they played. It was like Eastern <laughs> Illinois Community College Tech or something like that. Uh, and to see what, what, what they've gone since then and be ranked, it's amazing. So it's, it's an honor to be, to be on with Rashad for sure. I appreciate all the love. Appreciate all the love. Definitely amazing seeing what, what UTSA is doing. And I, I think I'll start off with this, Rashad. I know um, – like, y'all are doing so many good things right now at UTSA. And it's not just saying you guys up for success right now, but it's saying others up that attend UTSA in the future for so much success. Um, recently, UTSA has been announced they're going to the AAC. That's a huge step up. That's a huge accomplishment for this, for this school and this program that's only been playing football for a few years. Like, what does it mean to you to be a part of something so special? Uh, you know, it's definitely it's definitely awesome feeling to be a part of this. Um, you know, just this season alone has been very historic for us, just from all the, you know, all the stuff we've been uh, been able to accomplish thus far and, um, you know, everything that, you know, we set out to accomplish, you know, with the remainder of the season as well. So, um, you know, it's definitely special. And, you know, uh, when I first committed here, it's kind of what I had, had in mind and, you know, kind of was the vision that, um, you know, I wanted to stay home and, you know, be able to try to help build this program up, you know, with it being fairly new and, um, you know, try to get some of the lo more local talent to stay home and, you know, be a part of this. And um, I feel like, you know, I feel like that's really, you know, starting to take, you know, I mean, take shape and come to reality. And it's just been a great, it's been a great journey so far. And, you know, still got, still got a lot more to go. And, um, you know, we still got a long, long season to go, but, um, you know, very blessed to be a part of it and, you know, happy to see where, where this where this can lead to. Love that answer. And I know you spoke there about wanting to stay home, wanting to play for your hometown school. What does it mean to bring this level of success to San Antonio, to the city you grew up in? Like bringing this, all this football success, there's got to be amazing. What's that like? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's a it's definitely an amazing feeling just because, you know, like you said, I'm I grew up here my whole life, you know, went to school. At, I went to Judson and, um, you know, before that, I played little league ball for the junior Rockets and outlaws. And, um, you know, growing up, you know, being from the city, there's a lot of talent here. Um, and, you know, I, you know, the kind of the kind of feeling that we get down here, you know, that a lot of it gets overlooked and. Um, you know, by other cities such as like, you know, Houston and Dallas. And, you know, in reality, we have a lot of ball players down here as well. And um, <clears throat> just being able to do this and uh, for the city really make really makes really makes people really start to look over here and like, OK, like there's something going on in San Antonio. Like, let's take notice to it. And, um, you know, all that can do is just uh, boost up the city and, you know, and just bring more attention to us. And with that comes more attention to, you know, the local talent is down here, like high school and, you know, uh, you know, a new thing that's popping up on the scene too, like seven on seven and even the younger, even the younger, you know, little league kids. So um, I feel like it can do nothing but good for this city. And I feel like so far it's been doing that and we've been getting a lot of good love and, uh, you know, 
you know, being noticed a lot more. So I feel like it's, it's been good so far. And, and you mentioned it. You went to Judson. Uh, you know, we all, I, me being from San Antonio, I know all about Judson's high, high school football's history. And they're, they have such a storied history uh, in, in the city. And they've been, they've won state championships. They've had a lot of success over the years. Um, they actually beat me when I played. They beat me in the playoffs. Uh, I went to Warren. So they beat us in the playoffs my my senior year. So that, that kind of sucked. But uh, <laughs> um, so they, with that said, like, do you, did, was there a certain, can you, could you feel that pressure playing for Judson? Like, this is a team that has probably been probably the most successful high school football team in San Antonio for the longest time. Um, did you, did you feel that pressure playing, playing for the Rockets? Um, you know, I feel like there, I feel like that pressure is something that always comes with just from, you know, how, how historic and big Judson is, just like you said, you know, we've won championships and been in, in a lot of them too. We've been in 12 total, one six. And, um, you know, I think that's definitely up there in, you know, high school football overall. We have the longest, um, you know, streak as far as, uh, you know, winning season going to the playoffs. And so, you know, playing for Judson is, you know, a big, a big, um, you know, carries, carries, you know, some big weight on you. And like you said, uh, you know, with that comes a little pressure. But um, one thing that, you know, Coach Trailer brings up, you know, over at UTSA is that pressure is a privilege. And, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of the way that I see it, just um, playing at Judson, you know, having that pressure, you know, is a privilege to have because, you know, I mean, not everybody can have that. Not everybody can be, um, you know, at a program as historic and as big as Judson. And, you know, I love my – I love, you know, every second I spent there and, you know, felt – I feel like, you know, going there kind of molded me into the player I am today just from – you know, the discipline and hard work and, um, you know, all the all of those things that Justin instilled in me just from, you know, not just a football player, but also, you know, a young man. And, um, you know, I feel like, like I said, I feel like going to Justin is, you know, kind of made me who I am today. And I feel like part of that is just from the pressure that comes with it. And, you know, I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, and, and also, you know, that – Judson High School has been a big part of the success at UTSA. You know, your teammates and Sierra McCormick got, got were together at Judson as well. How has that relationship been like between y'all two? I mean, I basically grew up together. You know, y'all went to the same high school. Now you guys are both big, big parts of UTSA uh, nowadays. Like, how, how has that relationship been between you two? Have y'all talked about it? Is this something y'all envisioned together, you know, back back, back at, uh, at Judson? Or kind of talk about that, that relationship a little bit. Yeah, so I met Sincere, um, I want to say about seventh grade. Um, we were playing on the same like spring league team together, uh, the junior talents. And um, at the time I was still playing running back. Running back is, um, you know, the position I first started playing and, you know, I had fell in love with it. So me and him were at running back and, you know, it was kind of just like a dynamic duel back there. And um, at, at the time, sincerely on the other side of, the, of town, you know, he was, um, what is it? Yeah, I think he was more over here by like O'Connor and stuff. And, you know, I mean, I was over there by Judson and then, um, come high school, he ended up moving to that side of town and, you know, we reunited. We already knew each other. I knew the type of player he was, you know, the type of player I was. And, you know, we we had already clicked like we were good. We were, we clicked at the with the junior talents and, you know, it kept on going once he got to Judson. And, um, you know, me and Cecilia always talk about it. And when we get recruited, um, you know, that like you said, that was kind of like the vision that we had was coming to UTSA and trying to, um, you know, trying to help help grow it into what we know it could be and uh you know kind of just what we've seen for it and um you know we talk about it all the time like it's crazy how it's really like coming into you know you know coming into reality like how the things that we envisioned and um you know talked about way back then how they're really starting to you know come to you come to light and it's just crazy to see because we really talked about this stuff like you know what I mean like um coming in being uh, freshman, freshman all conference and, you know, breaking records and doing this, doing that. And, you know, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely awesome to see like how, how that, you know, really has manifested into, you know, where we're at today. And, um, you know, we're both just happy to be a part of it and, you know, just really looking forward to what, what else can happen, and, you know, what, what this can really turn into. Yeah. That's so sick that y'all grew up together. Um, and now y'all are both both succeeding so much at UTSA. That's super cool. Um, you did speak there about playing running back. I'm curious when 
you fully committed to playing safety and like what made you choose wanting to play safety as opposed to another position that you could have played? <clears throat> so growing up, I always played running back. Like that was my, like I said, that was my first position. That's what I felt. That's the position that I fell in love with, you know, and made me fall in love with football. And, um, you know, honestly, you know, I mean, honestly, not to, you know, gas myself or anything, but I was pretty good at running back. Um, uh, some of, uh, kind of, honestly, some of, most of my offers were kind of for running back. Um, I had some P5s here and there, um, you know, from like Boston College, Virginia, Syracuse, and then other schools wanted me for running back too. And um, even uh, one school, you know, I mean, want to take me as an athlete, like put me wherever. But um, <clears throat> I made the transition over to safety my sophomore year uh, at Judson because um, they needed more people on defense. And, you know, it was either between outside linebacker and safety. And, you know, at the time I hated defense. Like, I didn't want to play defense at all. But, you know, I mean, I was going to do what, what I needed for the team. So, <clears throat> so I felt like, you know, I mean, I told, I kind of just told him like, you know, I mean, if I, I'm going to play defense, I, you know, I mean, I'd really rather just go to safety. And that's really where it started. And, um, you know, I mean, that whole offseason, I was working, trying to make the transition and, you know, I mean, trying to learn a whole new position. And, you know, I mean, that's where I kind of learned that I'm more than just a running back. I'm a football player. Um, and I fell, I fell in love with safety, you know what I mean? And um, that kind of what made me want to be a safety going into college because, you know what I mean, like I said, I could have been a running back. I play wherever else but you know what I mean I wanted to play safety and I just I just enjoy I enjoy what comes with being a safety just you know like the challenges of um you know what I mean you can be in a you can go to, roll to the middle third be in a post roll down be in a flats blitz you know what I mean like you can do you can do a lot of different things you know being a safety and um it's not an easy job and you know what I mean I kind of you know what I mean be me being me I like challenges so um, that's kind of where I fell in love with it and kind of wh why I wanted to um, take it to end up making that, making that, you know, jump over to college, being a, being a safety and, um, you know, kind of how me being a safety kind of started. So, um, but I don't, I don't think I would, going back, I think it's probably one of the better decisions I made. And, you know, I'm happy that, you know, I was, I, I made it and, uh, you know, I'm happy with, you know, with, with, with what I'm doing now. Yeah, and one of the things you said there was you could do so much as a safety. One thing that you can do is strike fear into a pass catcher. You know, I've been preaching this for years. You're the hardest hitting safety. You're the hardest hitting player in the country on the defensive side of the ball, of course. Um, but what would you say your best attribute is? Because you're so much more than a, a hard hitting safety. You do so many other things. What's your best attribute in your opinion? I would say, I would say kind of like what I just said earlier, like I'm a football player, like, and you know what I mean? Trying to be more specific about that. I feel like it's just more of my versatility. You know what I mean? I can do, like you said, I can do more than just hit people hard. Like I can, I can go, I can play zone. I can roll to the post. I can be in the flats. I can, you know what I mean? Come down and play, man. I can blitz off the edge. I can, you know what I mean? I can play, I don't have to just play safety. I can go in the slot. Um, if I really need to, I could go to corner. Like you know, I could be outside backer and you know what I mean? Bliss off the edge. Like for me, I don't feel like I'm just a safety. I'm more of a, you know what I mean? Like a jack of all trades. You can put me wherever and I'm, you know what I mean? I'm gonna find a way to make plays and whatever that is to me, I'm gonna do it. You know what I mean? Do it to the best of my ability. And, um, you know, I, that's kind of like how I like to be used. And um, because, I feel like just doing one thing, you know what I mean, gets kind of boring after a while. I like to be able to do, you know what I mean, mix it up and do a lot of different things. Because at the end of the day, you know what I mean, football is a game, you know what I mean, I like to have fun with it. So um, I feel like doing that, being a bunch, doing a bunch of different things makes it more fun for me personally. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, it, doing that just really works on my game because, you know, for me, I want to be, you know what I mean, I want to be the best and I don't want to just be the best at, you know what I mean, just, one thing but bad at another I want to be able to do everything you know what I mean I want to be able to rush off the edge like a like a real DN I want to be able to come down and cover like a like a true man corner go you know what I mean roll roll on the post like a real safety or come down and be in a box like a you know what I mean like a real linebacker I want to be able to do it all and that's kind of how I try to um you know 
mold my game and, you know what I mean, and try to mold my game after some player like that. Like um, one, one exactly like Tyron Matthew, I feel like he does that pretty well. Buda Baker, like those guys like that, Jamal, um, Jamal Adams and, um, you know, guys like that, like that are just versatile and kind of, kind of like Jalen Ramsey now too, like how he's being used in multiple different ways. So, um, you know, I mean, I like, I like that stuff and I feel like that's what, that's what makes me who I am, just the versatility and, um, you know, I mean, being able to be wherever and try to go make a play. Yeah. And that's obviously it shows your athleticism and being able to go pretty much anywhere on the field uh, and play all these different positions. It also shows you know, with your athleticism, uh, your ability to play other sports. I know you, you talked about it. You played Little League Baseball um, earlier. Uh, are there what, did you always knew you wanted to play football? Were there any other sports growing up that you kind of could see a path to what you are now? Um, and if football wasn't an option, what, what what would be that sport that you would play? Um, nah, honestly, I've always felt like football was it for me. Um, like growing up, I played I played basketball, I ran track, um, I played some soccer. Um, but I always knew football was it for me, and I kind of just like after middle school, football was really all I stuck to. Like I ran track just to stay in shape and um, work on my speed. But other than that, I always knew football was it for me. But, um, you know, if there was a sport that I would, you know I mean, want to take serious and try to, um, you know, really play for, it would probably be basketball. Um, you know, I probably need a little bit more hype for that. But, um, you know, but basketball for sure. Like, I, I really enjoy playing basketball. I still, you know I mean? We still will go to like the rec or go hoop in the convo or, you know I mean? Just go hoop at a park with my friends and, you know, it gets real competitive, but I love I love playing basketball. And, and um, but football football has always been it for me, and I always knew that. And you know, I just never seen anything else. You know, the way I seen football. Damn, yeah, that that's good that that you knew the for early on because you could definitely concentrate on that. So that's that's pretty cool. And you also mentioned earlier you had a like P uh, P five offers from Boston College and stuff like that. Um, I also I also saw that you had uh, I don't know. What extent these offers went to, but I saw you had a, you had um, scholarships to Columbia, Cornell, and Yale. Um, obviously, Ivy League, highly academic schools. Uh, were there any thought like was there any thought that you might want to do go that route and play and be in like an Ivy League school and very prestigious universities and get an education as well? Or was UTSA was always the, the end game? Or well, how did you how did you manage those those types of scholarships? Mm -hmm. So, so to answer the first question, yes, I did I did consider going to. Um, Yale, I was really high on Yale. Um, but you know, so to just go, to, just to go through my whole process. Um, so I had what 13 total offers. Um, you know, ultimately ended up committing UTSA, um, the summer of my junior year and stayed through the whole way. But, um, some, so throughout the process, um, I was really considering Boston College, then it was Yale. And then um, it was kind of between like UTSA and Tulane, and um, and that was just that was just because um, so I made like a little a little list um to go through like break down kind of like, you know my interests and what schools I had the interest they I felt like they had in me and you know kind of just what I was looking for in a sense and I still have the list in my days in my notes and um you know I really went through you know what I mean went through what I was looking for thoroughly to you know make sure I'm making the best decision for me and UTSA was that and um you know but uh I did I did I was considering going to Yale um the only thing with that is is that Ivy Leagues don't do full full rise they do based off um um the sal salary so um you know for me I wanted to get the best best deal I could so um you know I mean I didn't want to have to come out of pocket anything for school so I mean, unfortunately, I that route just wasn't the best, the best for you know, I mean, my case, but it was definitely something that I was looking into. But um, I ended up choosing UTSA just because, um, you know, honestly, it wasn't even it wasn't even really because it was close to home because you know the schools that I named, none of them were really in Texas. You know, I mean, I I, I had no problem with leaving Texas, but um, I really came in UTSA because one, um, my major cybersecurity and we have one of the best schools in the nation for that. Um, two, you know, what I mean, just just the whole, the whole vision I had just coming here, like being able to try to build something up, you know, for, that was that's brand new and, um, you know, what I mean, just 
just th- that that kind of that kind of stuff. So um, you know, I mean, and I felt like I had, you know, I mean, kind of just took a look at the roster too, and I felt like I had an opportunity there that I could take advantage of, and um, so and UTSA ended up being, um, you know, I mean, the best for my situation, and you know, I mean, a bonus was that it was close to home, and so you know, I mean, like. How could I not? How could I not pass it up? And you know, I mean, I tell people to this day that coming to UTSA is probably the best decision I, I made this far. I I awesome. would say it was a fantastic decision. I think you made the right choice. Um, all of us that have been able to watch you and this team, not only this year but last few years, like just such a fun team, such a fun program to root for. So I I could say on behalf of me, Brian, and the rest of us on the transfer portal made the right choice for sure. <laughs> I um, appreciate that. <laughs> no problem. I know you have your own podcast. Um, I know it's it hasn't like you haven't done much of it during the season, but I know in the summer you put a few episodes out. It was called Out of This World. Um, how did your podcast come about? What are some things that you talked about on your podcast? So my podcast came about because, um, you know, with the whole NIL thing that just recently happened. So we were able to profit, you know, off our name, image, and likeness. So um, one idea that I had, well, the idea really sprung up from my brother, my older brother, uh, Sean. He he's kind of he's really big in the podcast and, you know, things like that. So we felt like a good way to, you know, take advantage of the NIL stuff was having a podcast because, you know, how many people are really doing that. And then, you know, once it gets to, you know, having a, a bigger, you know, following and, um, you know, I, I'm able to put out more episodes and stuff like that. And like, we'd be able to, you know, possibly charge, you know what I mean, to like a subscription-based type thing. And, you know what I mean? And, you know, I mean, that, I felt like that would be a good opportunity to to um try to, try to capitalize on, on the NIL, you know, opportunity that we have. So, um, all credit goes out to my brother because he's the one that really put everything in motion and, you know, did the, did the little artwork for it. And we recorded at his house. He has all the mics and um, stuff like that. So really the only thing I do is just go over there and um, say my piece and then I leave and everything else is handled by him. And um, we just, for the podcast is more, I, I like, I, I feel, you know, I mean, I look at myself as a realist, so I like to keep things into real perspective and, um, you know, things that really happen in real life so I like to talk about you know some of the things that I talked about were just you know the first episode was really just about me and like who I am just so you know not everybody knows it, like my story like broken down and stuff like that or you know bits and pieces uh you know just depending on when they came into my life so I kind of took it like that for the first episode and then I know like the next one we talked about mental health a little bit I think kind of just like um, you know, with the whole situation with my brother and how, you know, I mean, you know, I kind of dealt with that and how he did. Um, I know we talked about, um, you know, like trading like crypto and stuff. I, I'm, I, I'm into, you know, stuff like that. I'm pretty sure y'all seen like the NFTs and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, I mean, I, 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 I with the podcast, I really want to be able to use it to, you know, share real life things and try to put, you know, I mean, put people onto onto some type of game or, you know what I mean? Just, you know what I mean? Just shed light on whatever I can, you know, through me and through, through my older brother, just, you know, just experience that we have, or, you know, some knowledge that we may have that not that someone else may not know. And, you know what I mean? They can come to a podcast, listen, and, you know what I mean? End up learning again, something out of it, opposed to just going on there and just blabbing, you know, blabbing about nothing. Just, <laughs> so that's, that's how I like to try to keep in, you know what I mean? Like y'all said, like you said, and just I haven't really been able to do it just because you know we're in season so during the season I'm I'm real locked in and try to you know I mean keep, keep other things to to a minimum and you know I mean just try to stay you know I mean at my at my at my peace but um but yeah after the when the season's over definitely gonna get back to it and try to put some more content out but that's really that's really how it all came up and how I go about trying to what to talk about on it let me find out in a few months you're going to be giving everyone crypto advice and what to invest in before draft season <laughs> comes around. Let me find out that's what's about to happen. Um, 
I, I did want to ask because you you did talk about NIL a little there. I want I know you've dabbled with it a good bit. Um, you, uh, sincere, some of your other teammates are doing really good with NIL, especially in the San Antonio area. What are some of the partnerships that you've been able to uh, like? Why are the partnerships that you've come about in NIL and how are those going? Oh, shoot. I'm going to just go ahead and use this to shout all of them out, huh? <laughs> Hold on. Let me give me a second. All right. So I'm going to just go down. So, you know, I mean, shout out to all the people I'm partnering with. Uh, and Sarah Auto Group, Fritz Kennel, uh, BSA Sports Group. Um, Pinkerton Barbecue, F McClone Four West, Amen Standard, and uh, members only. Um, shoot, I hope I'm missing anybody, but um, hold on, sorry, but, but um, you know, it's been it's been pretty cool to um, you know, take part in this opportunity so far, just because you know it's brand new and um, you know, it's definitely been something that. Uh, has really helped me and benefited me and I know benefited you know everyone else has been able to take part in it and um you know I hope that everybody has the opportunity to take part in it in some way or fashion and um but you know it's been a great thing and you know I just the way I try to just go about it is you know I see it as a mutual relationship like you know I mean I'm I'm they're helping me out so you know I mean I'm gonna try to help them out as best as I can whether that's just through social media posts, you know, giving them more exposure um, or wearing, you know what I mean, wearing whatever and, you know, being out and people see me in it just however I can just, you know what I mean? Cause like I said, it's a mutual relationship and, you know, the better, the better, you know what I mean? The better look I give off, the better look, you know what I mean? They give off as well. And, you know what I mean? It kind of just bounces off of each other, but it's definitely been something awesome to be a part of and especially being one of the, you know what I mean? First people to, be able to take part in it just because it's so new and you know it just got approved what this july so um it's definitely been it's definitely been good and uh you know i'm interested to see where where it goes where it goes within the next couple of years and how things start to evolve with it uh rashad i know you you talked about it a little bit uh when you were talking about your podcast um you talked about your your brother uh Bryce, uh, I know living in San Antonio, I definitely followed the journey. Um, it was amazing to see every the whole city kind of come together around 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 your brother and around your family, and it's just an amazing story all around. And and how did how did what did that mean to you? Just seeing the entire city of San Antonio just you know rally around you and your family, and 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 did how did, what did that mean to you and your family? And then how did you kind of you know respond to that, and how does that affected you moving forward? Um, you know, just with that whole situation. Uh, you know, it, it was definitely a great thing to see. And one thing I like to go back on was just his birthday, um, you know, before he passed was just because it was ridiculous. Like, because, you know, with COVID and everything was going on. So, you know, that's when the whole drive-by um, parade thing was going on. And, you know, there, I think there was about like 500 cars that passed by the house. Like, it was ridiculous. And, you know, I mean, and one, one specific, one specific um, part that I remember was that there was one car that drove by and, you know, I mean, they were, you know, yelling their heads off and screaming and they're like, you know, they, they said that they're from Floresville. Like they don't even, we don't know them. They don't know us, but you know what I mean? Floresville is about, you know what I mean? Floresville is a good it's ways a bit, away. Yeah. yeah. It's a good ways away from uh, Converse and, you know what I mean? Something like that was just crazy. Cause you know what I mean? Just, just from, you know, it just showing how big, you know, how big the community is down here like you know what i mean everybody everybody is so like just i would say close-knitted close-knitted as a community and um you know it was really just good to see and um you know there's just a lot of love down here and um that one of the another reason why i love san antonio just because things like that you know people go real hard behind um each other and you know i mean support support one another you know to the highest extent and um you know it was definitely great to see and it was a great thing to be a part of and you know all that stuff and all the love that everybody was showing through all that time really helped help me and help my family you know get over all that and um you know really really just know that 
we weren't alone in that time. And, you know, it was just a real good, real good thing to see and be a part of. And, you know, uh, it was greatly appreciating those still to this day. And, um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't just stuff like that doesn't just, just sweep away. Like you, things like that are remembered forever. And, um, you know, I know his legacy lives on still to this day. People still wear the shirts. And I mean, they still, you know, you know, hashtag Bryce Strong is still alive and stuff like that. So it is cool to see. And, um, you know, definitely, like I said, definitely appreciate it. And, you know, we definitely made that whole process a little bit easier just to get over. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really amazing to have, you know, all the support and as much support as you can, um, especially with family and, and, and growing up, you know, as a growing up as a football player and growing up in sports and in school, it's, there's always so many, you know, there's so many, so many th times or so many ways that you can kind of fall off that wagon and, and kind of, kind of veer off a different path. And it, having a good support system is always more, very important. Uh, who was that to you? Uh, was there a specific person that you could consider was the one kind of tying you down and keeping you in track and keeping you on? Um, would that be your, your family and maybe a coach, maybe one of your friends? Um, who would you consider that person to be or, or people in general to be? Um, shoot, honestly, it's too many just to name, just name individually. But for sure, like my, my family, for sure. And, you know, like my close, like close friends that, um, you know, that I still mess with every day and um, just all, just, just all of them. Like, you know, I mean, they make sure that I keep my head in the right place. I stay on track and, um, you know, I mean, I just stay focused and stay on the, stay on, you know, stay on my mission. And, um, you know, for sure, my family though, like it's always been like that. And, um, you know, me and my family are, we're, we're a close group and, you know, we, we all rock as one and we move as one. And, you know, I mean, everything we do is for one another. Um, so, you know, I mean, they, they've always been, you know, I mean, my backbone behind all this. And then, like I said, just my, my close, my close friends, the ones that, you know, I mean, been with me since day one. And, you know, I mean, regardless of if I'm all the way at the top or all the way at the bottom, you know, what I mean, they're going to be there regardless. And, you know, I mean, no matter what, I know they got my back and they know that I got theirs. And, you know, I mean, nothing, nothing can change that. And it's going to, you know, I mean, it's always love forever. And, um, you know, I mean, people like that don't just, don't just come around. So, you know what I mean? And it's a, it's a, it's a good thing to see. And, and, you know what I mean? To have, and I try to tell people too, like find a good group of friends because, you know what I mean? Life can get rough. And, you know, during, definitely during that time, I really seen who, who was really, who was there, really there for me and who was just, you know what I mean? Just, who was just there. If you know, you like yeah. what I mean? Um, but yeah, definitely my family and my friends for sure. And, you know what I mean? I love all of them to death and, uh, you know, I mean, I go hard, uh, I go hard, not for me, but for them, because, you know, I mean, they just as invested I am in myself and my journey, they're just as invested as well. So, um, you know, I mean, that's kind of how I just look at it and I uh, appreciate them to the fullest. Yeah, that's awesome. You've definitely got a really good support system. I always see your family, uh, your mom, especially uh, supporting you so yeah. much on Twitter see that all the time so that's super cool to see um and just speaking to hashtag bryce strong and everything else there um i like we know you every weekend watching you play what are some gestures you do uh on the field to to kind of show everyone like what's up i guess i don't know how to word that but what are some of the gestures you do for bryce on the field um i'll probably say the only thing i really do is every time um right right before the game when I come out the tunnel for the captains is that you know I do the little cross on my chest and I um blow you know I mean take both my hands and blow a kiss up in the sky just kind of like that like all right like we here and you know what I mean when I step on the field it's not just me it's me and him and um it's kind of that's kind of just how I see it and um after that after that point then it's just you know, I mean, whatever happens, happens. And I just, you know, I mean, it's just we in the arena, and we, we, we're going to go to work. So, but that's really about it. I don't know how many people really see that, but that's really just my moment between me and him before we go out. And, you know, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, after I do that, then I know it's go time. No, it's really dope. Um, and then I'll speak it into existence, whether it be this spring or next spring. 
you're going to get drafted. And when, when people get drafted, it's always a talk about what the first thing they'll buy is, whether it's like giving back to their family or whatever. I'm curious, after you get, because that's going to happen, what's the first thing you're buying and why? <laughs> um, shoot. Is it going to be crypto? I've been asked that question. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it might be. It might be, but. Uh, I've been asked that question a few times. I re- I really don't know. Like, I, honestly, I know for sure, like, I want to be able to get, like, a nice little place to live for myself. You know what I mean? Furnishing stuff nice. Like, um, I want to have, you know what I mean? I really want to get um, um, a Hellcat charger. I've always want- wanted one. You could, pro- you could probably see it on my little wall, but I've always <laughs> wanted a charger. Um. And then, you know what I mean, just, like, some clothes and stuff that I'll, you know what I mean, clothes and shoes. And, I mean, after that, I'll really be good for the most part. You know what I mean? I'm going to definitely um, hook my hook my, hook my my family up. Um, and then, you know what I mean, I'm going to just try to be smart with my money. You know what I mean? Like like you said, with the crypto and stuff, I want to invest it, whether that be, you know, crypto, stocks, or whatever. Um, I just want to be smart with my money. I want to try to, you know what I mean? I, I don't want to be one of those dudes that, you know what I mean, get to that level and just lose, you know what I mean, just lose it all and just blow it. And before you know it, it's just, you know what I mean, you're just left with nothing, you know what I mean? I want to be able to have it and then just, just, you know what I mean, keep keep letting it grow and not have to worry, not have to worry about that anymore. But um, yeah, for sure. I. I think one of the first things I will do is go get me a nice little, little spot to, to lay my head at. <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that, that's kind of, that's kind of my thought. That's how, that's how things will work out. But um, yeah, I, de- and then I definitely got to get my, my Hellcat charger. <laughs> I've always. Yeah. You'll, you'll definitely deserve it. Uh, you definitely deserve that. Once you get in there, speaking of the NFL, uh, we all know the, the most, you know, the probably the most successful road runner is Marcus Davenport. Um, fun fact, I actually went to high school with Marcus for a year. Uh, okay. so, uh, we, uh, have you spoken to Marcus at all about the, the journey, the experience being coming from UTSA and going to the league? You know, what, uh, you know, like I said, not many runners have made that, have reached those ranks. I think David Morgan's one of them, uh, Marcus, you know, there's been a few others here and there, but, uh, you know, not, not to that, not to, to the success that Marcus has had. Have you spoken to him at all and any advice that he's given you about that next step in, in, in your career and moving forward into the NFL? Um, yeah, I've talked to Marcus a couple of times. Um, you know, nothing too, too crazy. Um, I'll probably say the most I've asked him probably about football wise, just, you know, how he take care, how he takes, takes care of his body and what he does to do that. Um, and, you know, just from that standpoint, just like, you know, I mean, he just says like, you know, I mean, just um, just as far as like lifting and um, like getting in the trainers and taking care of everybody that way and like eating right. But as far as like the next level and like real in-depth stuff, no, nah, I haven't really talked to him about that. But uh, I talk to him on occasions, especially when he uh, come back home and, you know, comes to the facility. You know I mean, well, I'll say what's up to him and chop it up real quick just to see how he's doing and stuff. But um, I haven't really talked to him about, you know, what's his, what is really like up there and um, how to maneuver through all that stuff. And and also with 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 Coach Trailer, what he's done, um, he's definitely allowing more 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 UTSA runners to be able to have that opportunity to go to the league. Uh, talk about a little bit about Coach Trailer, what he's done to the program. We've all, we, I mean, the writing's on the wall. We've all seen what he's been able to do and and uh, elevate this program to a level that that we haven't seen it before. Um, talk a little bit about Coach Trailer and what he brings on to the program, and and also the the triangle, the two one zero triangle of toughness. Can you kind of explain what it what exactly that is and what what that means to the program? Yeah, so to just with the two one zero triangle of toughness, just like. All that Coach Trailer, Coach Trailer brought all that with him. You know, what I mean, he instilled a culture with us, and you know, what I mean, we've been bonded since day one. And Coach Trailer is a great, a great coach. He's a great person, and you know, he's definitely someone that's easy to play for. And you know, what I mean, just just give your all, give your all for, and you know, what I mean, that just goes for everybody on the staff too. And because um, you know, one thing that he definitely lets us know is that. 
whoever's on the staff is going to be an extension of him and you know everybody on the on everybody you know from the coaches to the trainers to the supports the support staff and uh you know the video people and you know everybody throughout the whole building you know they're all they're all you know i mean they're all just the same and they're all the be around and play for and work for and you know just that's that just that alone makes things you know better for us and you know really enjoyable and but coach trailer coach trailer is a great great coach great guy like i said and um you know he's done a great job you know from day one when he got in here and really really takes account takes an account to you know what we have to say and how we feel and what we think on certain things and you know he really gives us a voice and one thing that they really made a big emphasis this offseason was that we're going to be player a player led team and i feel like that has really you know helped us with um you know how well we've been doing this offseason just from or this season just from you know i mean not just the coaches holding us accountable but we hold each other probably more accountable than the coaches do just you know i mean cuz we just how close we are we want to see each other we want to see each other succeed and you know i mean all together we want to succeed as a whole and um, I feel like you know them doing that just made just made us better entirely, and um, you know kind of just with the two and zero triangle of toughness. That's just that's really our brand and what we what we um, you know kind of kind of like I said brand ourselves as, and you know I mean our culture and you know I mean for one we're gonna be physical on defense, we're gonna run the ball, and we're gonna be you know I mean we're gonna be physical on special teams, we're gonna make play on special teams, and that's kind of what we thrive ourselves off of and, you know I mean, try to hold ourselves up to that standard. And um, I think it's a great philosophy. And, you know, I feel like a lot of people are really bought into it. And, you know, like I said, I, I feel like that's just a tribute to the season we had last year and the season that we're having this year. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I feel like I, I just think it's been great. And, <clears throat> you know, just from everything else that he's been teaching us and, you know, trying to make us better, better men at the end of the day, I feel like that's a really big thing. And, um, you know, I feel like they've done, been doing a great job with us thus far. And um, like I've been saying the whole time, just I'm, I'm excited to see where, where else this can lead to and how far we can go with this. Yeah, you spoke about how close this Roadrunners team is. It's so close. Everybody's so unselfish. And there aren't many teams in the country that you could look at and especially at, at the Conference USA Group of Five level, where you could look and see how unselfish everybody is, how committed everybody is to just wanting to straight up win. They don't care about their own personal accolades. Uh, and, and we look at this little Conference USA program that just started a few years ago, and on both sides of the ball, you go, okay, he's an NFL player, he's an NFL player, he's an NFL player. No, nah, he's an NFL player too. Like, that's insane. Just Oh, y'all are doing so many good things. And you guys have played in so many fun games this season. It started by going to a Big Ten school. Sure, it's Illinois, but they were coming off a big week zero win against Nebraska. Y'all sliced Illinois up. There was another super fun game where you guys went at Western Kentucky in a shootout, beat one of the best offenses in the country. And your brand of football – is not to go out and score 50 plus points, but y'all did it anyway and won the shootout. So that was super cool. You guys have played so many fun games this year. I'm curious what your favorite game to play in this season was. If we're gonna be honest, it was this latte game. And um like that game was just so fun fun from start to finish, like pre-game like it was fun during the game it was fun and you know personally I don't feel like I had the best game like just from you know like just how I feel like I can play in the stand I hold myself up to but you know just like you said like everyone's so just unselfish like I really did not care like you know I mean how I felt personally about how I played like I that was probably the most fun game I've been a part of and you know it was just something that was just real enjoyable and I was just like man like if we can if I can have as much fun like all the time like this like you know what I mean like I will not care like even if I feel like I had a bad game or like the best game ever like regardless like I feel like that was probably the most fun that I had had this year but the thing is I feel like I have more fun 
each and every game that we play just from just because, you know, what I mean, like, like I got touched on like this team is really close. And I felt it that I felt I, I felt at the beginning of the season that we're going to have a special year. And um, of course, we still got a long ways to go. But, um, you know, this team is just so close. And because this is for a lot of us, this is our third year all playing with each other. And, um, you know, the chemistry is through the roof. And I keep talking about that, too, throughout, you know, through. Um, all the different interviews and stuff that I do, just the chemistry is just different. And you can, you know, I mean, you can really feel like we all just really, we all really love each other. And like, you know what I mean? Like when we all, when we're on the field, like you, you like the, all the other 10 dudes on the defense know that, know that I got their back and I know that all 10 of them got my back. And you know what I mean? We're all going out there for each other and not for ourselves. And, you know, and then two, like, it's crazy because, you know, I mean, a lot of teams, you know, the defense don't really mess with the offense. The offense don't really mess with the defense. But, you know, I mean, when the offense is on the field, you know, I mean, we're watching them play. Like, we're rooting for them when they score. We're all celebrating, jumping up. Like, when we're on the field, they're celebrating, the offense celebrating, jumping up. And, you know, we know we can depend on each other. Like, if if we if we let up a score, the offense is unfazed they were like hey don't worry about it we got y'all next thing you know they go out there and score and like all right we got y'all like and you know vice versa like come the end of the game and it, we got to go out there and you know i mean make sure that we we hold them off and you know what i mean seal the deal you know what i mean we we're looking at them like don't worry we got y'all and they're on un- you know what i mean they're unfazed they, they have 100 percent trust in us and we have 100 percent trust in them and i think that's just a real unique thing and um, it's, it's really just awesome to see and also be a part of it. You know, I mean, <clears throat> I feel like all we can do is just keep on going, keep on climbing with this, and you know, the sky's the limit. And I keep on saying it, but I'm really just excited to see where else we could take this to. And um, you know, it's just a great thing to be a part of. And you know, it's also this is a great feeling to have knowing that you know, I mean, that um, regardless of what's going on, we all know that we got each other's back and we're going to go do it, you know, just to, cause we want to, we're trying to win, not just cause, you know, everyone has, you know, ulterior, ulterior motives. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, You said that the offense knows that the defense has their back. The defense knows the offense has their back. In that Western Kentucky game, I talked about the defense had everybody's back with that last minute stand against one of the most potent offenses in the country. So congrats to y'all on that one. I know it's a few weeks removed, but that was one of my favorite games of the year to watch. And, and everything that you've said in this, this interview so far really just confirms that UTSA really should be America's team. They are one of the most fun teams to root for. They're such an easy team to root for just confirming everything I've said all season that this is one of the most fun teams in the country. And I don't know why people it's been, it's taken people two months about to finally realize that this team is, is special. Um, The next thing I want to ask you after talking about like your favorite game to play in this year, what was the toughest game to prepare for and the toughest game to play in? Toughest game to prepare for, toughest game to play in. Um. Okay, so toughest game to prepare for. Um. I would probably say. Hmm, I'll probably I'll probably have to say Illinois because the first game out. You know, what I mean, like you gotta because first game out. You know, what I mean, you go through spring, uh, fall camp and all of that, but. You know, what I mean, to play in a real live game, you know, what I mean, is totally different from from being in practice. So preparing for Illinois was a little different. Um, and then two, one thing I had totally forgot about also with the Illinois game is that, you know, that we actually have fans back in the stadiums. So, you know, what I mean, we get up there and <laughs> we get up there and there's 30,000 fans booing us. And I'm just like, oh, snap. Like, you know, what I mean, like it's just. Great. It was totally different compared to last year. And then um, I would say the hardest game, the hardest game uh, that I played in this season was probably, I'd probably say UNLV just because um, just from what we were practicing and the thing that they showed on film were totally different from what they were doing 
uh, the whole first half. And, um, you know, I mean, and really, really kept me personally on my toes. And then, but, um, you know, once we got to the second half and we made adjustments and stuff, you know, we pretty much settled in and things were smooth. But, you know, we definitely was probably the most difficult game to, um, you know, on the field why just because you know i mean what they what they're doing and what they had been showing were two two totally different things you you mentioned that uh the louisiana tech game and as a me as a fan as a ut state fan that was probably my favorite game as well and the reason why is because before this week or before last week there was five games played in rust in louisiana uh and UTSA's loss were 51 27, 27 20, 63 35, 20 to 6, 41 to 27. Uh, so they wasn't very fun uh, playing in, 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 in Rusty, Louisiana. But to see that come out and not just win, but win pretty convincingly, and it's the first, the first time winning at Louisiana Tech definitely shows where the program has come. Um, so that's definitely my favorite win of the year as well. So I definitely agree with you on that. Now, um, so, you know, with, I have just have a, a couple more questions for you. Uh, with UTSA going to the AAC, it obviously adds to the incredible rise of UTSA football from the beginning to now. I mean, it's been about 10, 10 11 years, um, you know, from that first game in 2011 to, to now. Uh, did you follow the journey at all? And were you living in, in, in San Antonio and Converse? Did you follow the journey of UTSA football as you were growing up? And also, where do you see, what do you see the future of UTSA being after, you, after you're gone? You leave the program. You're in the NFL. Where do you see the UTSA can go? Like, what's the end game for UTSA? Do you see Power Five conference? You know, maybe you know, just competing with Texas and, and, and stuff like that. What, what do you see with UTSA moving forward? Um, so you know, I mean, growing up, I really didn't follow UTSA like that. Um, I really didn't start following UTSA like that until I was getting recruited, honestly. And um, but you know, like I said, once I really started to see what 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 was over here and what um, what the possibilities, you know, I mean, the opportunities that were over here, I kind of just, you know, I mean, it would just feel like a no brainer. And just like you said, just like my, what I envision for UTSA, you know, after I'm gone and, um, you know, I was kind of telling, uh, I was kind of telling Liam before, you know, I mean, you had gone on that, um, you know, when I first committed here, um, you know, I mean, my vision for UTSA, TSA was kind of just like the U, um, and you know, with in that aspect, kind of just like um, you know, before the U was the U, the U was in, you know, what I mean, they weren't the U, and you know, they kind of started doing that by having, you know, what I mean, keeping the local talent home and um, building them, building it up, and you know, what I mean, going out and playing in big games and you know, performing and kind of starting again that that kind of um, getting noticed and um, you know, what I mean, getting that respect and. I, that's kind of how I see UTSA doing. And um, it's kind of crazy, um, you know, how our very first coach was, you know, I mean, a Miami Hurricane legend. And um, so I don't, the, the only way I feel like is right is, you know what I mean, for for us to end up, you know, kind of like that same kind of um, legacy is that. And then, um, you know, I mean, I don't see why we can't be in, be in a, you know, power five conference and um, competing with, you know, the big name schools and stuff like that. And, um, but it's only a matter of time. And I feel like, you know, with the way that we're going now and, um, you know, with, with how things are rolling and, you know, the type of people that we, that, um, you know, the type of people that we have in the building and uh, players that are coming here and playing, I don't see why that the program can't just take off and, um, end up being one of those big names and you know I mean when I'm old and can't do anything I don't you know what I mean and um I don't see why I can't look back and just be like man like we came a long way and now we're you know what I mean up here and that's kind of how I envision it and um you know it's definitely gonna be cool to see then a couple years you know way down way down the line and but that's kind of what I envision it kind of just following the steps footsteps of the U and um, kind of in a way, like, you know what I mean? Like how UCF uh, has been doing the past couple of years too. And, um, you know, like kind of like how Cincinnati is now too. Like, you know I mean? Really stepping up on the scene and uh, playing, you know what I mean? Being ranked number two in the nation and stuff like that. So um, I don't see why I can't. And, 
you know, yeah, I, I feel like I've been saying this the whole the whole interview, but I'm just really excited to see where where it can go. And um, you know, like I said, when I'm old, I'm ho- hopefully hopefully it is already to that level, and um, I'm gonna look back and just be like, man, like it came a long way. They always remember, regardless of how big uh, uh, something gets, whether it's a, a football program or anything, they always remember the stepping stones. And you're definitely going to be talked about for the rest of history of UTSA football is one of those people who definitely was a stepping stone to, to great. You know, so uh, that, that's definitely something to, that, that it should encourage you and, and should be something that you do take pride in. Uh, my last question, very easy question. Obviously, Texas, San Antonio is big on Whataburger. We love Whataburger. It runs in our veins. Uh, I hope it's the same with you. You have your anomalies here who don't like it. But for the most <laughs> part, San Antonio is and Texas is Whataburger. Uh, what is your go-to Whataburger order? Like, What, what is the one thing you get at post-game, whatever? You want to go get some Whataburger? What are you going to get? That's a good, that, is, <clears throat> that is a good question. Um, you know, over the years, I've kind of been switching and flip-flopping. Um, but right now, I probably have to say um, a, du- a double meat Whataburger, just meat and cheese. Or I might, if I'm feeling extra fancy, I might do a add bacon and barbecue sauce on it. Spencer Burford put me on that, and it's pretty good. <laughs> and then, um, and then you know, just fries and a Powerade, spicy ketchup, and go about my day. That's good. That's good one. That's a good one too. I like that. What's yours, Brian? Uh, my, my, what, so I, I'm kind of like a shot. I change it up. If I'm just, if I just want, like, if I'm just craving Whataburger, like I just want my usual, I'll get the double meat with cheese all the way, uh, uh, with fries and, and, and spicy ketchup. That's just the, the, the basic go-to. Um, sometimes I do get the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich. That's probably my second favorite, uh, which I, which is weird. Cause I don't really like barbecue that much, like barbecue sauce that much, but that barbecue chicken strip sandwich is really good. And then for breakfast, that breakfast burger that they just put out or that's been around, that, man, I don't know if you've had it, Rashad, but that <laughs> is, is that thing is, that, that thing got crack in it, man. It's good. That I think it's good. I, it is pretty good. Yeah. Also, also, I'm not a, all right, people might might bash me on this. I'm not a big fan of the um, honey butter chicken biscuit. Oh, uh, yeah, me neither. Dry, but I will get the, um, the honey barbecue chicken sandwich, but instead of barbecue sauce, I will put honey butter on it. Yeah, I've done that too. I, I wasn't a fan of that the first time I had it because it was a, it was too sloppy, like it was too messy. It would get my fingers all like uh, sticky. Uh-huh. But I have gone it since then, and yeah, that, that's the good one too. That is yeah. the good one. Sorry, Daddy sorry Mel- that Liam, you don't got Whataburger. Where you're yeah, that ain't, <laughs> sorry that, for you. that ain't fair. I'm lost in Las Vegas without them. What's going on? Y'all making me hungry and very jealous right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll go on to my last question and then we'll get to our, our last six questions with pick six my last question for you Rashad is when you make it big time when you make it to the professionals how do you plan on giving back to others um, you know that's, I, have, I, have, I have a couple of different ideas um, you know so once you know, once I get to that point, um, one of my one of my ideas that I definitely like to do um, is, you know, you know, hopefully I'll have some type of endorsement partnership with like like spray ground or something. I want to be able to have like, you know, like a football camp and, you know, come and, you know, everyone gets like a spray ground bag with you know, whatever in it or like have a back to school thing and, you know, put like school supplies in it with in the spray ground bag and give it out to kids. And um, one thing about me, I'm really I'm really big on like, uh, you know, giving back to the youth and because, you know, you know, I mean, we've all we've all been kids before. And, um, you know, that's when you have a lot of dreams and aspirations. And um, I feel like that's like the best time to really be invested in into somebody's life or, you know what I mean? Just give them that light. So, you know what I mean? Go after your dream. So I'm a, I'm real big on, you know, being, being somebody that the, you know, that kids can look up to and, you know, look for, you know, like, just as like an inspiration. And so, you know what I mean? I definitely want to do something for like for kids, you know, whether that's a football camp, back to school drive, something like that, um, you know, or, whether that's just, you know, donating to, you know, a, a certain cause. I want to be able to have my own foundation for, 
you know, a certain type of cause too. Um, my mom has the Bright Strong Foundation. Definitely want to, you know, be, get involved with that, make that a bigger thing as well. Um, and, you know, just really whatever way I can, you know, just just to make a difference in, in the community and, um, you know, give back. And like I said, just try to make a difference because, um, you know, life life is not easy. And, um, you know, I kind of learned, I kind of, you know, I mean, I really learned that last year. And so anyway, I can really just, help people and give back and try to make a difference in their life is, you know, I mean, is what I would like to be able to do. And um, like I said, I have a lot of different ideas and aspirations for that, but um, I would, de I'm definitely going to be giving back in some way or fashion and um, would definitely like to be, you know, in the community, um, you know, doing things, you know, as often as, as possible. And, you know, just like I said, just trying to make a difference and, um, you know, one, one person at a time. Yeah, that's a phenomenal answer. And now we'll wrap this up with pick six. I know you've had two of these in your career. I'm sure we'll see the third shortly. Go get us that pick six against UTEP on ESPN2 next week. Um, all right. We talked about food a little there with Whataburger. What is your favorite food? What's your least favorite food? Um, I'll say my favorite food is probably... So I'll probably say my favorite food is seafood. Um, my least favorite food. I don't know if I have a least favorite. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I'm a big food guy. All good. I, All get, good. I, I get bashed my team for being being fat. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, seafood's good. That's my favorite too, man. I love seafood, especially, love. you know, the crawfish boils. And, ooh, I tear that up, man. I can yeah. eat like four or five pounds of that. Yep. All of that is good. Yep. I think I'm with y'all on that one. Uh, who's your funniest teammate? Who funniest teammate? Um, I'll probably say uh Demetrius Allen. That he is a clown. Like a funny guy. He's from Mississippi, so he got the accent too. He is hilarious. <laughs> All right, we'll take your word for it. Uh what about the top place you want to visit? Oh, I've always wanted to go to uh, Santorini, Greece. Like, I, I think that place is just awesome. Like, I've always wanted to go there. And, like, yeah, I definitely want to go to Santorini and then, too, like, somewhere somewhere in the islands. I don't know where for sure. Um, and then uh, I would definitely like to go to, like, Paris or something. That would be cool. Strong answers. Uh, what about your favorite sports memory growing up? Growing up? Oh, okay. So uh, back when I played with the Junior Rockies, it was our homecoming game, and we were in a real close game with the uh, – with the what were they? The, the Reagan Junior Rattlers or something. I think that's what they were called. And it was a crazy game. Like it was back and forth, back and forth. And I just remember, like, on this, on like the run to seal the deal, I had got the handoff, and it was the first time I've ever spun on somebody. But it just happened so naturally, and I like spun on them and went and scored a touchdown, and then, like everyone just went crazy. Like it was a crazy game, but that's definitely like a moment that I've always remembered. And um, yeah, it just I would probably say that one. Great answer. You keep making cases why UTSA might need to give you a wrap at running back this season. <laughs> Maybe we could see you house one from the backfield. Um, what about – we know how big football is in Texas. San Antonio, huge football hub, especially in the youth. Why is Texas football better than every, uh, every other city's football or every other state's football? Why is Texas football just so much better? Texas football is so much better. I'm not even gonna say, I'm not. Even, I'm not gonna give the obvious answer as that because you know. I mean, we have better players, but um, <laughs> Texas football is better than anybody else. Just from how how involved the community is with 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 the games, because uh, in a lot of in a lot of places, you know, I mean, Friday night the whole city gets shut down, and everyone's and everyone's at. I mean, the high school football game, I know for us a couple of times, like the big games that we play like Steel or somebody like that, like uh, Justin Stadium holds 
10k steel holds about 12 and it's sold out like like sold out and like steel still will have like people even us we'll have people like standing outside like the fence trying to look over and watch like it's crazy and that's just for a high school football game i don't know how many other places are like that for real like in other places but i know just just the community alone everyone is real invested into you know into the game so yeah i feel like that would make us different just settle just alone from us having better players so I, I know that Las Vegas could not relate to that. All we've got is Gorman. And I'm sure that some of the worst high schools in Texas <laughs> hold so many more fans and have a way better stay in the Gorman, which they have a great <laughs> stadium, but I mean, it's just better in Texas, like you said. And the last, uh, last question before you get out of here, just we spoke about uh, your family and Bryce and everything. What does Bryce Strong mean to you? Bryce Strong, what Bryce Strong means to me is just on the days where you just don't feel like doing anything or you don't feel like you can keep going, keep pushing, you know, Bryce Strong means that, you know, I mean, regardless of what's going on, you keep fighting, you keep pushing, and um, you just keep on going. And, you know, regardless of what the circumstances may be, you just keep on fighting because, um, you know, someone can, someone can always have it worse than you they think. The situation could always be worse, so. You know, you gotta just try to, you know, look at it in the best, the best, the best way you can and just keep on going and keep on fighting. And, you know, eventually everything that, you know, what I mean, that um, that you're trying to achieve or whatever it may be, you know, it'll, it'll end up coming, coming to like just because you kept on fighting, kept on going. And that's what Bryce Strong means to me, because, you know, what I mean, some days. Some days, you know, what I mean, I wake up at 6 a.m. and I may not want to get up out the bed, you know, what I mean, just because. It's 6 a.m. But regardless, I got I got things I, I think I got things I want to accomplish. And, um, you know, I have goals I'm trying to meet. And, you know, what I mean, I have you know, I mean, I have a vision that I want to see come to come to light. So, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I might I might be tired. I mean, I want to get up. But, you know, what I mean, I got people counting on me and I got I got myself counting me as well. And, you know, what I mean, people I haven't even met yet that's counting on me. So, I mean, I got to go up and go get it. And. Um, you know, I mean, just keep on doing it throughout, you know, I mean, day in and day out. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just a great answer there. A uh, perfect answer. And thank you, Rashad, for coming on doing this interview with Brian and I. Uh, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. I hope everyone appreciates Rashad Wisdom, football player, not safety, football player, does everything at UTSA. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Brian uh, and I, the rest of the, us at the Transfer Portal CFB, really, really appreciate it. Um, if you're watching the end of this still, please make sure to follow us, subscribe to us on YouTube, like the video means a lot, helps us go a long way. And Rashad, if you want to shout any, any of your social media out or anything, feel free to. Yeah, you know, first off, I just want to appreciate, just say thank you all again because, you know, I mean, uh, appreciate y'all having me on, um, you know, and all the love that y'all been showing, you know, since last season and this season as well. And then, um, you know, my social media is my Twitter is at Rashad Wisdom. And then my my Instagram is at I am RW39. So if y'all want to go on there and follow me as well, and you know, I mean, or whatever it may be, that, that's my social media. So, um, and once again, thank y'all again for having me on. And, you know, I mean, I really appreciate the opportunity. And, you know, I mean, y'all taking time out y'all schedules as well, because I know I, I know it's been a hassle trying to get with me, but I appreciate it. Uh, you're good, man. Yeah, you're good. You're good. It was you, you have you have me on. You have me on with you. It's my bad, Liam. You have me on with you in the middle of the World Series, man. That's what that's what that's how much you mean to <laughs> us and to me to the program. So, uh, yeah. No, it's, it was a blast. Thank you so much, and we definitely appreciate it. Definitely. Yeah, it was well worth the wait. Thank you again, Rashad. <laughs>